Is The Hobbit Better Than The Lord of the Rings? In one corner we have The Hobbit, a whimsical tale filled with adventure, treasure, and a charming band of unlikely heroes. On the other side, we have The Lord of the Rings, a sweeping epic that captivated the hearts of millions with its grand scope, mythical lore, and monumental battles. Both beloved, both crafted by the legendary J.R.R. Tolkien, but only one can claim the title of ultimate superiority. Remember everyone, if you find this video helpful, informative, or entertaining today, please remember to hit that subscribe button below. By subscribing, you'll never miss out on any of our latest videos, and you'll be supporting us to continue creating great content like this. Is it the thrilling adventure of Bilbo and his dwarven companions that captures your heart, or do you find yourself irresistibly drawn to the epic struggles of Frodo, Aragorn, and the Fellowship? Prepare to have your allegiance tested and your opinions challenged as we delve deep into the realms of fantasy, delving into the triumphs and pitfalls of each narrative. So let's see if I change a mind or two by the end of this video. Now I should start by saying comparing an apple and an orange is often seen as pointless. Our orange being the Lord of the Rings, with its bigger reputation and more grown-up themes and settings, as this has often overshadowed the simpler, but not lesser apple, or the story that we know as The Hobbit, which was, after all, made for children. But here's the thing, if a children's book can only entertain kids and doesn't connect with adults, it falls short on both accounts. C.S. Lewis, a friend of Professor Tolkien and author of The Lion, The Witch and The Wardrobe, expressed this idea. And I will also say here, I will be honest about my own preferences and biases as we compare these two famous stories. At first glance, the answer to this question might seem obvious. I could easily admit my own preferences as I do have a bias towards The Lord of the Rings. After all, this was my personal introduction. They were the movies that made me fall in love with cinema, the behind the scenes content that made me fall in love with filmmaking, and the books that really hooked me unlike many at all had ever done before. However, that doesn't mean that The Hobbit is of any lesser quality or importance. It may well have just been that the Lord of the Rings movies came first for me, and that is what got me going. The Hobbit has its own charm and can captivate not just children, but people of all ages. In fact, The Hobbit sets the foundation for what many consider the best story in modern fantasy. The success of The Lord of the Rings is built upon the charm, readability, and simple moral values found in The Hobbit. It's important to note that The Hobbit has a different tone and scope, and this can be explained within the story itself, as keen observers have long recognised. In universe, the character Bilbo is the author of The Hobbit. The tone of writing in The Hobbit is from Bilbo's perspective. Only after does Frodo start telling his own account. Not only does the writing style shift, but the world itself becomes darker and more challenging for Frodo. These moments mark the intense transformation of Frodo from an ordinary hobbit into someone embarking on a quest they have long awaited. Frodo, like his uncle Bilbo, believed that he was meant for adventurous journeys, and their shared birthdays had a special meaning. If you read carefully, you may notice that Frodo has glimpses of the future too, such as seeing the shores of Valinor from Tom Bombadil's house during his recovery. And if you are interested in exploring more about how Frodo sees the future, make sure you watch our video dedicated to that topic too. The Hobbit has a simple and enchanting world that appeals to people of all ages, including children, young adults, and full adults. It has captivated readers for many years. The decrease in popularity of The Hobbit in recent times is more due to the shortcomings of the film trilogy rather than the quality of the story itself. The Lord of the Rings benefited from a more refined portrayal of Middle-earth compared to that of The Hobbit. However, there are enjoyable moments in The Hobbit films too, and the cast, which obviously includes the likes of Martin Freeman, did bring those characters to life. The conversation between Bilbo and the dragon is reminiscent of ancient tales like Beowulf, showcasing the skill of storytelling. Like I hinted at before, maybe The Hobbit has just suffered from coming second to the movie screens when it had to follow a basically perfect trilogy. Where are you? Where are you? 
The heart of the debate is about which story touches a person's heart more. It's not about being right or wrong in preferring one over the other, instead it's interesting to explore both stories from the perspective of their author. As fans, maybe we should appreciate the greatest moments in each work and recognise how they complement each other. After all, one of my favourite moments from The Hobbit actually changed during the writing of The Lord of the Rings. In a previous video, we have discussed how Professor Tolkien significantly revised the encounter between Gollum and Bilbo in the depths of the Misty Mountains, but please check out that video if you really want to go into a deep dive on that as well, or maybe you just want to revisit it again. After all, it led us to having great moments like this. Blesses and splashes, precious. That's a meaty mouthful. <laughs> this scene was there from the beginning, but it went through a revision. This shows how the two stories connect and share themes and moments. The films echo one another, events that are informed by its predecessor. Pity. It was pity that stayed Bulbo's hand. Forgive me. I did not see. The question of which book is better is, in a way, largely irrelevant, as much as that is what this video should really be about, and that is me being honest. The books blend together into one long story, one big story, one that Tolkien worked on his whole life to make perfect. If we see these books as portals into a living world called Middle-earth, we can appreciate the history, cultures and languages that Tolkien created with such realism. These stories are like precious jewels, each one shining and unique, just like the Silmarils themselves. They are treasures for the world, and comparing them to each other is like comparing diamonds to diamonds. It's not very artistic or meaningful to do so. However, saying that, I will go back on myself slightly here, as I thought I would still give some more reasons why The Hobbit may well be considered the greatest story on its own, with me thinking I will just give you a top 3 reasons why now, although these will come in no particular order. One reason why some people believe that The Hobbit is better than The Lord of the Rings is because of its simplicity and its charm. The Hobbit tells the story of Bilbo Baggins, a hobbit who embarks on a grand adventure with a group of dwarves. The book has a light and playful tone, filled with humorous moments and delightful storytelling. It's like a magical journey that captures the imagination and brings joy to readers of all ages. Characters in The Hobbit, like Bilbo and the dwarves, are relatable and endearing. They face various challenges and obstacles along their quest, and readers can't help but root for them. The interactions between the characters, their quirks, and their bravery create a sense of warmth and familiarity that makes the story even more enjoyable. Unlike The Lord of the Rings, which is more complex and more of an epic tale, The Hobbit becomes a lot easier to understand and follow when you compare the two. It doesn't have as many intricate subplots or lengthy descriptions, making it accessible for younger readers or those who just simply prefer more simple storytelling. The Hobbit is like a cosy and enchanting storybook that captures the spirit of adventure. It takes the reader on a thrilling journey filled with encounters with trolls, goblins, and even a fearsome dragon. These exciting moments keep readers engaged and excited to see what happens next. You have found a way in. You seek that which would bestow upon you the right to rule. Another reason why some people believe that The Hobbit is the better of the two is because it is, as I touched upon a moment ago, a more accessible and easier read. The Hobbit has a simpler writing style compared to The Lord of the Rings. The language used in The Hobbit is more straightforward and easier to understand, and like I said, makes it easier for any age to understand it. The shorter length of The Hobbit is also a factor that contributes to its accessibility. The Lord of the Rings consists of multiple volumes and is significantly longer, whereas The Hobbit's more concise storytelling ensures that the plot moves briskly, keeping readers captivated from beginning to end. This makes The Hobbit a great introduction to J.R.R. Tolkien's works and the world of Middle-earth. It allows readers to experience the magic and adventure without feeling overwhelmed by the depth and complexity of The Lord of the Rings. In some ways you could almost say, The Hobbit is like watching a TikTok, whereas The Lord of the Rings is more like your YouTube videos. Short form content versus long form. Sometimes one appeals to a person more than the other. 
then you have my third reason, which is because it is filled with thrilling adventures that keeps the reader on the edge of their seat. In The Hobbit, readers join the quiet and comfortable Hobbit Bilbo Baggins where he unexpectedly gets swept into an extraordinary journey. From the moment Bilbo sets foot outside of his cosy Hobbit hole, he finds himself facing a series of thrilling and sometimes dangerous encounters. A beautiful fish out of water story. You have the encounter with the three trolls, the daring escape from the halls of Thranduil, and the heart-pounding confrontation with the powerful dragon Smaug. These thrilling adventures create a sense of excitement and suspense that really does captivate any reader. The quest for the treasure and the desire to reclaim the dwarves' homeland add a sense of purpose and urgency to our story. The characters embark on a dangerous and unpredictable adventure which adds to the excitement and keeps readers eagerly turning the pages. The Hobbit's emphasis on adventure and excitement sets it apart from The Lord of the Rings, which is a, as I said, more epic and sprawling narrative. While both offer thrilling moments, of course, The Hobbit's concise and focused storyline makes it a thrilling and accessible read no matter who you are or when you want to pick it up. It is safe to say that this is a journey filled with danger, suspense and excitement, and to those that so easily brush it aside, I hope you can step back, rethink and maybe now say, I have never been so wrong in all my life. So there we have it. Both The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings have their own special qualities. The Hobbit is loved for its charm and simplicity, appealing to readers of all ages with its playful tone and delightful storytelling. It is accessible and easier to read, making it a great introduction to J.R.R. Tolkien's world. The Hobbit is filled with thrilling adventures from encounters with trolls and goblins to a confrontation with a dragon or even a man who can shapeshift into a bear. It keeps readers engaged and excited. While the debate of which book is better may continue, it is important to appreciate each story for their unique treasures and enjoy the magical journeys that they both offer. At the end of the day, we can learn from Tolkien that treasure should be valued, but not to the point of losing sight of what truly matters in our lives. We shouldn't become so obsessed with one thing or another, like having dragon sickness or holding something so precious that it consumes us and makes us a burden to others. Is The Hobbit better? I'm not sure you can ever truly say yes or no, but the wisdom of The Hobbit is that it is okay to appreciate something simple and not let it overpower us. After all, it is brought home to me, it is no bad thing to celebrate. A simple life. With that now though, it is time for my question of the day, which is, which story do you prefer? I imagine most of you will say The Lord of the Rings, but I would love to know why as well. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this in the comment section down below. And now to shout out our patrons. You guys have been amazing in supporting our short film project. We have got some amazing updates coming soon. We are really making good progress and I cannot thank you all enough. We have the Divine Power tier member of Kevin, the Fire Demon tier member of Nasheath, and the Wizard Staff tier members of John, Andrew, and Hunter. You are all true legends of the Bro Hiram. Finally, I really appreciate your time in watching this video today. If you've enjoyed the content, please consider hitting that subscribe button and the bell icon with notifications enabled so that you will get notified when all future videos are released. Thank you once again for your support, and I look forward to seeing you next time on The Broken Sword.